live on YouTube and Facebook is connecting and we're going to be live. Well, hello everybody. This is your pastor, Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I am sitting here with the Boaz men in the house. You know, we're super excited about um, right, being right. here with you today and praise God for you. Welcome to another broadcast of the Promise and Ministries Network. I'm again, I'm Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I'm the senior pastor of Promise and Ministries. Welcome to the Promise and Ministries Network in beautiful Peachtree Corners, Georgia. It is truly an honor to be here to serve God. God's got great things for you. So let's go ahead and get into the announcements here and get into the word. Amen. Amen. Hey, look, share and subscribe. Share and subscribe. You already know. Share and subscribe so that, guess what, we build this community and so that more people can be blessed by the word of God. Amen. Right. We're a hands-on ministry. We love folks. We actually give. Uh, 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 First Lady and I don't take it. We don't sell books. We don't have a, a salary. We got what the <laughs> 80s call. We got a J-O-B, you know. You don't know that song, but it, it, it's, a, it's a song back in the 80s, right? Ain't nothing going on but the rent. Amen. So, <laughs> give. Give the fire, right? Give some of your give. Guess what? It's a part of worship. You're showing God that he's your source. Amen. And so guess what? Givelify. Go to an application called Givelify. It's on Android and Apple um, um, Apple phone. And guess what? Just go and download the application called Givelify and do a search for Promise Land Ministries in Peachtree Corners, Georgia. And you can give that. Give your tithe. Give your offering. Give your substance. That's a part of your worship. Amen. And guess what? Volunteer. We told you about the revivals just coming up. Guess what? Continue to volunteer. Show up. You know, you, you love the beautiful Atlanta metro area. So come and visit and show up and pray for people. Serve them some food. Give them a hug. Encourage them in the Lord. Amen. That's right. Encourage them in the Lord. God sees that. God watches your faithfulness. Amen. So give. Give God. Show God you thank, thank him by giving of your substance, your financial substance, and volunteering. Amen. To a ministry that's actually reaching people. Amen. And guess what? Wednesday Bible study. Thank you for showing up for that. Guess what? Get the word. Make yourself available to the word. Guess what? Begin to grow and invest in your spirit. Uh, by, by, by saying, Lord, I'm going to make myself available to receive the word of God. And, 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 and guess what? Grow in the word. Amen. Guess what? You never stop growing in Christ. Amen. And, and guess what? Your body, I mean, your body eats physical food. So your spirit eats spiritual food, which is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Boaz Institute. Great job, guys. We're on what? We're starting on week 11, week 11. of 24 weeks. We're almost halfway there. Yay. <laughs> And so thank you. I know it's been tough. I thank you for pressing. I know this weekend was a lot. And thank you, though. We got the second cohort coming in. So thank you for those guys that are coming in. And thank you that cohort one is working with cohort two. And guess what? Our job, we're fully committed into making godly men that are going to be family men that are going to increase um, um, and bless our church, bless our communities, and bless our state, and bless our nation. Amen? And so guess what? We're going about it. Amen? And then guess what? Welcome new members. Thank y'all so much for, for coming in, that the, the ones that have seen us online, that the ones that, who visited, the ones who know us by relationships. Guess what? I'm honored to be your pastor. First Lady is honored. We're honored to serve you. Um, and the men of Boaz, the, the, the members of the, of the church, the city officials, we're happy. We're here for you. We're super excited to be a part of your life. We are a community church. What does that mean? Guess what? We take the Bible and then we go about um, um, apply the word in our communities. Right. Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon us. Well, he's anointed us to what? Preach the gospel to the poor. Yeah. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, right. you know, to recover sight to the blind, uh -huh. to open prisons to them who are bound yeah. and preach liberty to the captives and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Guess what? That's our model. So we go out not only and just preach salvation, but we are preaching the full gospel of Jesus Christ to a hurting, dying community. Amen. Right. Amen. All right, man, I'm super excited about that. And so and so um, let's go ahead and get into the word. Let's go ahead and pray and get into the word. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you today. We thank you for the opportunity to minister to your people today, Lord. Father, we make ourselves available to you, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you're here with us, Lord God. Jesus said, if two or more of us shall gather, he is in the midst, Lord God. We thank you that you're glorified. Father God, we speak, speak what you want your people to hear. Yes. Nothing more and nothing less, Lord God. Encourage, rebuke, correct, Lord God. Strengthen, Lord God, embolden, and call, anoint, Lord, send out, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, y'all, this is week three of a series called You Have a Right to Justice. Yes. 
Amen. And so we do. And, you know, it's not a political message. It's a message of, of God. We talked about the story of Job and, and we're talking about this series has got four questions to it. How did I get here? Why did God allow it? And uh, 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 when will it end? You know what I'm saying? And where am I going next? <laughs> them, are the, them, them are the four questions people are asking. And, and this, number three is the one that's burning. When is this stuff going to end? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so and so we're going to get into that today. We talked about last week, weeping will endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. And guess what we talked about? We talked about, hey, guess what? Before you can get to morning, you've got nighttime develops you and gets you ready for the morning. Amen. Amen. And get what you do in the nighttime determines your morning. And God will take the nighttime right to guess what? To filter out, to burn off impurities, to burn off a nasty attitude, to burn and, and to burn off how you handle pressure. Amen. Because guess what? You have to, there's going to be pressure when you get out of this trial, when God doubles your income, God doubles your influence. Guess what? We like to talk about the material stuff, but still there's pressure, there's expectations, there's jealousy, there's a devil at the top that God in the nighttime is preparing you for. So guess what now? At the nighttime, you might even do offense. You're going to do injustice. People are going to lie on you. Guess what now? And, and, and I got good news for you that that is just to prepare you for the daytime. And I got even better news for you that your enemy now thinks that they were in charge of the night. <laughs> they did it to you and they think it's never going to stop. But guess what? I need you to tell your neighbor God is in control of the night. And the day. And so guess what now? Because of that, we understand just like today, there is a time Well, it will be over with now because to everything there is a season. Yeah. Amen. And we talked about now, if you cannot handle your night, you're not equipped now to live in the morning in the daytime. Amen. But so plenty of people want to. We talked about last week that plenty of people want to skip the night season and go straight into day. They want to skip the challenge and go straight. In. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophetic ministry. This and this. And this. I'm a manager. I'm a, I'm a star. I got all these contracts and all this other stuff now. But when night come, every time something bad happens, you cussing people out. Your parking lot ministry is booming. Amen. <laughs> Huh? The baby know how to flip people off. Everybody's mad. They know the Johnson family, if you don't pay them right, if you break a promise of the Johnson, if your last name Johnson, they know you're going to fight. They don't, they don't take, for, forgive me, no, no, that don't mean that's a speed bump. I'm sorry, just a speed bump. <laughs> right? They know if your last name Johnson, they know what happens. Amen? And so when the nighttime comes, it's to let your neighbor look at them and say, it's just a test. And guess what? The nighttime shows up and it comes to show. And we talked about before the night. God already knows what's in you. But the nighttime comes to show you what to tell you what's in you. That's right. And you're like, God, why? When is this going to stop? When is it going to stop? And God is showing you. OK, look, look, I'm still dealing with this area. I'm yeah. still dealing with lust. I'm still dealing with rejection. I'm still dealing with every time somebody do you wrong. You want to do them wrong. I'm still dealing with you. That you still mad at your ex. <laughs> Every time Clarence get a new car, you may you wanna you wanna tear something, and you ain't talked to Clarence in twenty years, right? Yeah. Girl, I can't believe that he got this. You know, he shouldn't have nothing. You know, he should just be naked out there under the bridge, and still that wouldn't be good enough. <laughs> Poor Clarence, right? And you need to get over it and move on. But guess what? Your nighttime comes, and some of you are stuck in the nighttime. God wants to get you today, but you got a night mentality. Yeah. Every time somebody talk to you, guess what they hear? They know about your night season. Guess what happened to me? I, oh, the girl cheated on me. And you know, you sound like a, hey, you were 18 years old. Yeah. <laughs> she left. She left with the lawn man. She left. You better be glad she left. You know, <laughs> every time somebody said, that's who you are. So guess what? They, you're known for your nighttime. Oh, that's the woman right there with the issue of blood. That's blind born. They, you know, back in the day, they were known for their, their, their defects. Yeah. Blind man Bonamaeus, short Zacchaeus, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> lying Judas, right? <laughs> Doubting Thomas, right? <laughs> I can't say Uncle Thomas no more because the wife break me down. So. <laughs> I love you, baby. I can't say Uncle Thomas no more. She didn't tell me. I said, that means this. I'm like, yeah, well, it just sounded good rolling off your tongue. So stop denying me, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> Amen. So guess what now? Till your night season comes, God is watching how you handle it because he's in control of the switch. You now to understand now, the devil wants you to believe that he's in control, but you are. Go ahead and turn to your Bible. Today we're going to talk about the when. When are you going to get out? Amen. And we're going to talk about that. And guess what? I want you to turn to your Bible. We're going to read a few scriptures and we're going to land some other place. Amen. So let's turn to your Bible to the book of Zechariah. Zachar, the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah. And that is the Old Testament. It's the second or third to the last um, um, book in the Old Testament, my apologies, right by Malachi, Zephaniah, huh? Before, it is? It's before Daniel. It's before Daniel. First lady corrected me, it's before Daniel. <laughs> it is before Daniel up in here, right? And so we're going to get there. I want you Bible scholars, I want you to get there and turn there. Why? For biblical literacy. I'm, look, I'm looking too. And so there you go. It's before Daniel. Amen. And we're going to get there. And guess what? This is one of the few court cases in the Bible. This is a court case in heaven. What you're seeing now is how court is handled in heaven. Mm -hmm. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1. And we're going to read probably verse 5 here. Amen. And this is something I want you to notice. This is something that guess what? Like there was a court case. Job went and there was a, a similar court case in heaven. This is another court case in heaven. Amen. And I need you to see. this, So I want you to know how things operate. Amen. While you're asking for justice. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. And so guess what here? Oh, you locked the door. Didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's OK. And guess what now? Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 through 5 reads this. It says here, and, and he says, that, and this is the prophet Zechariah having a dream about heaven or a, or a vision about heaven. It says, and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. Guess what? God said, God shows Zechariah, right? The high priest standing for the, before the angel of the Lord. And what, ha, what why is he standing before the angel of the Lord? And guess what? The high priest represents the entire nation of Israel. Amen? Right. So he says, and he showed me, uh, 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 and, and, and this is Zechariah talking, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and guess what? And Satan at his right hand to, guess what, resist him. So Satan's in court. There's a court in heaven. Right. And, and the God is just as a throne a great right from of judgment. And guess what now? The defendant is sitting here. And guess what? The prosecution is sitting here. And so the devil is sitting. Guess what now? In the side of the prosecution. And guess what now? The devil is resisting. How is he resisting now? With what accusation? The Bible says he has railing accusation. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren and he does it daily. How does he do? He goes in the courts of God and says, guess what Clarence did today? Guess what so-and-so did today? Yeah, she did this, but she didn't do that. She rolled her eyes when you said that. Every time you talk about tithing, you're going to bless her. Every time you talk about tithing, they you in the car, mom, I ain't going to give that. Yeah. The devil going back. I turn to God, you blessed him with that job. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Every time the rev talk about that, boy, I, uh, uh. Yeah? Every time the rev talk about holy living, I, I can't believe I'm, ooh, ooh, if he, I better, he better not say it again. Right? <laughs> And so the devil is coming, ready at his right hand to resist them. The de what the devil's trying to do with the resisting the accusation is try to talk God out of blessing you. That's how it is in this country. Guess what now? When anything wants to happen with black or brown or poor people, guess what now? Guess what? The, the rest of the nation says, look at the gang violence. So we shouldn't give them anything because guess what now? They, they, they accuse you. And so guess what they're cheating on elections. It's a Philadelphia, it's Detroit, it's all the black, the cap. And so anything, when people want to do good by you, your enemy, what do they do? Now they send what accusation to guess what now? Take to put the water, to take the fire out of people wanting to stand for you. Right, right. They're marching for justice, but look at the riot. Mm -hmm. 
They're supposed to cancel out people's passion or compassion for you now so you can know it's demonic. Anytime people want to do it, you can tell uh, the, the, one of the signatures of the devil is when, guess what now, or your, the enemy, guess what now, when when someone, God or people want to do good by you, guess what your haters are going to do? Girl, don't do that because he did it. All they're going to do is spend that money anyway. And they use that to stop that other person from doing good by you, yes. from creating laws that's going to give justice, creating laws that are going to stop people from doing certain things because there are certain people in this world that have an appetite for that type of fetish. They have a fetish for that. It's a fetish. And so they like seeing people get busted upside the head. It's like an ESPN event. I remember now, I read the, um, the letter from a Birmingham jail, and Dr. King, the church, had convinced, had told Dr. King, hey, look now, hey, stop coming to Alabama to, to stew this stuff because you're stirring up trouble. Don't be political here. You're stirring stuff. And I read, I, I glanced over it again yesterday, a couple of days ago now, to make sure my words were right. And Dr. King says, look, before we start anything, look, we purified ourselves to make sure we have the right motives. But then he says something. He said, I'm fearing now that your comfort and your peace is more important to you than justice. Mm -hmm. wow. And so what happens now, they're trying to accuse Dr. King to stop him from being effective. They don't want them free, so when you don't want somebody free, what you do is look at the liver and say, don't do, you know what I'm saying, don't, don't talk bo ass. Watch, save your money. Don't do this other stuff. You need yeah. to do this with it. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to do you before. All they're going to do, they going to be here to do that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to give all that stuff. You're not going to have nothing for yourself, and they're not going to do nothing. For, they're not going to serve. They're going to they're complain. As soon as they get out here, they're going to jet out, and they ain't going to see you. Huh? The devil telling you the same thing. Don't give the promise to him because guess what? All they're going to do is do this for you. And you need to give it to somebody else. It's going to do good because you don't know, huh? Mm -hmm. And so guess what? The devil's going to be right there. Notice how when you want to do good, the enemy, the busyness or whatever else stops you. So that's what happens here now. So guess what now? Then the second verse says, and the Lord said unto Satan, Lord, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you is not this brand plucked out of the fire. He said, ain't they got out? They just got out of trouble. They just out, out of trouble. You told on them, I judged them, I burned them for it. But guess what now? When you're in trouble, the, 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 your suffering is not enough. You got folks out there that guess what now? That's charged by the devil and no matter how bad you are, that still ain't enough. We're talking about justice now. I remember my name when President Obama got elected, and he said, and they were just complaining about him and all this other. Ain't he a socialist? Also? I was like, man, you didn't have forty-three of them. <laughs> I'm like, dang, can't we have one? You, you tripping? You, your church is tripping. The Antichrist is coming. Six, six, six. All this other stuff. And I sat back and I and I looked at how they thought the same people that prayed with you, how they saw you, and it frustrated me. Like, how dare you? So our kids can't be president unless they come and get permission from you. Right. And so how can you tell? Because when some positive thing got to happen now, then you get railing accusation. That's the weapon of the number one weapon of the devil is accusation. He's a socialist. He's this. He's a. I remember one time that uh, 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 doing that, and John McCain was like the most respectful guy you could have. And these elderly ladies and these people come up. Well, well when, when he was running against Obama, and the lady said, "He's a Muslim. He's a terror. He hangs out with terrorists and all this other stuff." And John McCain took the microphone and said, "No, ma'am. He's a family man. We just have different. We differ on the issues." Yeah. Beware of people who make their enemy the devil. Beware that it, it, beware of folks that try to make that's a demonic, it's a Jezebel spirit that guess what now? They got to turn their enemy now. Now no, we just can't agree. I just gotta be a war between good and evil. And of course, if you evil, then I'm 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 the Saint Gabriel. The devil does that, it's from him. He is taught by that he taught them that mess. 
I'm getting where I want to go now. I'm getting where I want to go. And so he says, God knows, he says, you, they just got, ain't they suffered enough, devil? Have they, they, the brand has been plucked out of fire. That means they just got out of fire. Verse 3 here, because I got to move. And Joshua clothed, was clothed with filthy garments and stood before them. And guess what now? Now Joshua is like you and people here. Now you have been suffering. You have been through trials. You have had, didn't have the right to vote. You've been maligned. You, you got vitals, uh, 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 mass graves everywhere. You've been begging stuff. You can't go build anything in Silicon Valley because you're so busy every year trying to keep the ballot. And so the devil got you off balance. You can't even move forward because you're so busy just trying to stand. And the devil was okay with that because he knew. Why did he accuse? Because he knows when God talks, life is going to show up. And so guess what now? Because of all that injustice, guess what? Filthy garments, you got bad schools, the, 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 the roles are jacked up, people are dead, huh? you behind, you're dying early, abortion, all that other stuff. Guess what now? And then guess what? The devil got you blaming yourself. And what's happening now is every time something good happened to you, the devil go back to the government and say, we got to stop. We got to stop from vote. We got to stop. Why? Because they, 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 some people love to see you with filthy garments on. Yes, yes, yes. Low test scores. Love it. So what they're trying to do is get you to go before God and get you to go stop, keep people that, that God has touched. He's trying to stop people that God has touched to deliver you from doing it. They, he tried to get them to turn around. Yeah. Well, look at what's going to happen here. We're, gonna, we're almost done here. We're going to go to the next church. And he, an, he answered and spake unto those that stood before him. This is God saying, say, and God is saying this right now. After all that suffering, justice, look at them and say, justice is coming. God declares after the devil has done that, God is looking at the sin that the devil is coming for. He said, no, he's already paid enough for that. And I was trying to fight this message and God said, no, I need you to speak prophetically for them because I've been trying to be a teacher instead of prophetically. And God is saying to you right now, this is what he's going to do. Take away the filthy garments from him. And he said unto him, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you. So guess what now? Your enemy says because you're wicked, you should be judged you should, because you're in sin. So you're in sin now. So the devil comes to bring your sin up to get God to stop from blessing you. God says, okay, since you're going to do that, I'm going to pay. I'm going to cause your iniquity to pass from you. I'm going to deal with it right now. Hmm? And behold, I've caused your iniquity to pass from you. And then now I can bless you. I will clothe you with a change of clothing or remnant. Clothing, remnant means clothing. And I said, let them set a fair mighty or crown on his head. Authority. Restore you back to where you're supposed to be. Hallelujah. God, the word for you today is God is going to restore you back to what you were supposed to be. And your enemy has nothing to do with it. They are powerless to stop it. So they set a foul mount or crown or hat upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And guess who else stood by? The devil stood by and could do nothing about it. So you want to know why you get stuck a lot of times as people, as black or brown people or anyone else? Because a lot of times the devil is going and whispering to everybody, don't, don't help them out. You heard what they did the other day. They heard, and they're trying to get people mad at you so they can fight. <gasps> hmm? Don't you think my enemies don't take some of these recordings and say, look at this. Look at what he said. They, he said he ain't never been beaten in court. He said he go go get him, you know. <laughs> huh? The devil accuses. But you've got to understand that as long as God is on the throne, you have nothing to worry about. Amen. Amen. We're talking about justice. We're talking about when. Amen. All right. Oops. We're talking about justice. We're talking about when. So some of you have been beaten. Some of you have been bruised. Some of you have been treated wrong. Then guess what now? Some of you have been doing it. And so you just started acting out. You've been rejected so much that you've been acting out now. And so the devil has got you thinking that you put yourself there because you're a bad person. But a lot of that activity is coming because of the accusation. And guess what? Now, I ain't never seen a brand that's in a fire act right. 
So a lot of times you're trying to judge somebody, but they're not that way because they're evil people. They're that way because they've been put in a fire. Saying, I just saying, saying, okay, God has ordained marriage, man and man, and saying such marriage. And I get that, but guess what? Now, some people are doing that because they're heartbroken. They're confused. And guess what? Because you don't love them now, you're going to deal with the sin rather than the root of it. The low test scores and all that stuff. And you're going to deal with that, but you're not going to deal with the fact that you want to attack, cut, and cut the preschool programs out. Now, that's what happens. with. So now what we want to do now is deal with the symptoms, but we still want to keep punching people and get mad when they bleed. You don't want to give the people justice, but you want to watch your football game in peace. You don't want nobody to take a knee or nothing, but you want you don't want to take the pressure off of them now. But guess what? You don't want them to say nothing about it. So when people come in and free them, guess what happened now? You got the church. You got other people now saying, well, you know, them people, you know, they riot. Don't get mad because I know you want to get mad and do something. I don't want you to do nothing because I want them to stay right there. So I need to talk to you. Up. Well, you know about the riots and Jesse Jackson and Elsher. So they want to stop you from doing anything to help. But guess what? Now it doesn't matter because if God be for us, who can be against us? And God will judge you for doing nothing about it. God will judge you for doing nothing about it. We're talking about justice and when. Guess what now? Guess what the win is? Guess what? You are on pause, not because you're a bad person. You're on pause now to give people who have power to do it a chance to fix it because guess what? That judgment will fall on them for doing nothing. Jesus said, though, but the word of God says this in Isaiah 58. He says, guess what now? And we talked about that. Now, I don't want you fasting with, with, with about going without food and praying in tongues and all that stuff. I wanted you to lift the bands of people who were oppressed. That's the fast I wanted for you, but you didn't do it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. I had another scripture, but I'm, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you because I don't want to go out of the way because I don't want to just talk about your enemy. I don't want to talk about people. It ain't just black or white people, but guess what? Now, it ain't a color, but if you agree with this stuff, if, every, if, if you find yourself every time somebody want to do something good for poor black brown people and you got a reason that they evil, then I'm talking about you. If you find yourself every time something good happened to them, you got a natural little word to say, but this and this and that, but they're killing their own, all, their own people, all kind of other stupid stuff now. As many of, of Hitler's own people that he killed, and you ain't got nothing to say about that. But if you are a person who wants justice and have lost a lot because of that now, I got good news for you. Turn to Psalm 23. I was wondering, I was missing the scripture. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 23, Psalm 23. And we're going to land here with the last 30 minutes I got. Amen. And I'm going to stop reading at verse 5. Amen. The 23rd, we call it the 23rd Psalm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read. I'm going to go ahead and read for the sake of time here. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on takeaway so you don't have to focus on that other stuff. Amen. 23rd Psalm. Amen. I'm going to give you a chance to get there. The 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. I don't know what you're going through in your life, but guess what? God loves you. God, guess what? You're so hard on yourself. And America and the world has been so hard on you to where you actually think you don't qualify for God's goodness. And every time you try to reach for it, people, some hateful people begin to broadcast how hateful you are. They say it to themselves. And all, they, they, all, they all the negative stuff, but no good stuff. Why? Because they know that words of light will move you forward. Yeah, that's right. So they use that negative stuff as a weapon. Young black man and this and this and this. I remember one time I was going to the store. Yeah, this is Dr. Luke from Oral Roberts University. 
I remember going to the store and I remember my young son running away from he, he got ahead of me. He just ran off to go to the cereal or whatever like that. And I remember I was like maybe 10 steps away from him. And I saw an older European looking guy, a, a white gentleman. He looked at and, and, and he didn't know we were together. And I remember him looking at my son with disgust. And I, I and then he saw I was with him and then he changed his face. Almost like he was trained to believe these young black men are his enemy, but he changed it because I want boy. I looked at that joke like, oh, huh? <laughs> mm. I wasn't blinking one one bit on that boy. boy I was, it was like hot sauce in my blood. Then boy, I switched off. Man, you don't ever look at Junior like that. Right. You gonna have a bad day right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, I know that look. <laughs> look like. I ain't soft now. I'm, I'm kind, but no, no. <laughs> huh? But I remember, I'm like, good Lord. We have caught and said that they, and, and, and then me, it was as black men have, to, have tolerated it. Yeah. Have put up with them talking about your son like that. Put up with them talking about Chicago. Put up with them elderly people saying, oh, running their mouth because you want a friend. But they're going to talk about your son that way. And you wonder why our black, young black men are, are cur they, they putting word curses on them day and night. And they fighting the words. All they want to see is that. We're talking about justice. So God has a plan. God has a desire. God has, he, he wants to do certain things. But guess what now? You don't believe it because you have heard what your enemy said about you, that you evil, that you bad, that you, that you, are, all you is a gang member, all you are is a gang member, abortion, 13%, 98%, all of that stuff. I remember going to go be a, 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 a for my interview to be, become a captain in the army or what, what, about, what, about a year ago. And I remember talking to the colonel and the colonel put me to the side. He said, I've been a police officer, so-and-so, so-and-so. And you know, the black, the first thing you want to talk about is bad about black people. 98% of the people I deal with is. But not, that's what they hear. So guess what? It ain't, it, no, it's, it's that same war. And so no matter how much they have suffered, it ain't never enough suffering. It's never enough. They can't ever clap. Folks can't ever, ain't talking about no white people. I'm talking about folks. If you agree with this, I'm talking about you. It's never enough. It's a drug. It's a fetish. Yes. Yes. It's a demonic. God never, thank you, Holy Spirit. God never said that about you. Who told you that you were this way? Who told you you were lying? Who told you you were a gang member? Who told you 30%? And it never came out of God's mouth. It came out of the devil's mouth. Why now? To stunt your growth. Because he, the devil know if you believe that faith comes by hearing and you'll just keep doing that. Yeah. And so right now he'll empower a group of people there that all they're going to do is pump that on Fox. All they're going to do is pump this right here. All the electors going to pump it. All they're going to do is pump it. You're a socialist. You this right here. You that right here. From the church, they all line up and they agree with each other. I, I went to school with them. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So you got to understand, if you want justice in your life, you've got to begin to allow the Lord to be your shepherd. Yes. What's happening now is you're letting everybody be your shepherd but God. What does that mean now? I shall not want. What does that mean? What does it mean? It says here, he makes me win. You, you make the Lord your shepherd. He makes you to walk down, lay, lay down in green pastures. He leads you beside the still waters. And guess what? He restores your soul. Justice. Look at your name and say justice. Right. He restores your soul. God does it. You don't have to do it. You ain't got to get your enemy back now. God does it. As long as you stay in his will, as long as you're doing what he said, do that. Now. As long as you're abiding in him, guess what? God does the fighting for you. Yeah. And when God does vengeance instead of revenge, rest restoration and justice is a part of that. Yes. Yes. 
Well, your thing is your enemy now. You've let your enemy wrestle with your words. You're trying to convince them. Well, actually, this doesn't mean this. Actually, this means this. And actually, we just want this. We just want American history taught right. They ain't going to believe none of that stuff. Why? Because it doesn't benefit that dev the devil. In order for people to treat you wrong, they got to believe that you're the bad guy. Right. That's right. And fair teaching in history now demilitarizes people. It makes them less military. Like, oh, man, okay, dang. The devil needs some hateful so they can fight you. <laughs> he restores my soul. He leads me in the path. God does it now. You can replace God. He with God. God leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, guess what? I will fear no evil. But guess why you never got destroyed? Because God is with you. That's why the lynching didn't do it. That's why the burning, that's no matter whatever they do. They didn't sent General Lee. They sent Hitler. They sent Trump. They said they still can't gain by drugs. None of that stuff seemed to, seemed to kill you off. Why? Because God's hand is on you. And they find themselves out fighting against what God wants and yes. don't even care about it. Yes. Could it be in your personal life now that guess what? Now you're complaining about what happened to you when you should be celebrating that you're still standing. Look at him and say, I'm still standing. I'm sick, but I was sick, but I was still standing. She left me, but I'm still standing. He lied on me, but I'm still standing. I lost my job, but I'm still standing. It would have killed another person now, but the reason why you know you're anointed now is you can wave your hands because you're still standing. It's not because you got a million dollars in the bank. It's because you survived what other people would have crumbled under. God's hand is upon you. David said, I know that, God, you're with me because why? You didn't let my enemies triumph on me in Psalm 27. Just you can have confidence in this. That guess what? Now you can tell your enemy you can hit me with your best shot, but I will still be standing. We talked about before the devil's not anointed to destroy you. He can't destroy you. He can't break you. He can only make, he can, a God can only use him to burn off that other stuff that God, God didn't need anyway. Right. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Guess what? Because God is with me. God's rod and God's staff comforts me. And this is where I want to land. He prepares a table. You better tell me something in the presence of your enemies. He prepares the table. When is God going to deliver you? Guess what happened now? God's got to prepare the table and God is allowing all of that stuff in your life to stink and to suffer and let that brain get hot in the fire. Let you have a bad reputation because guess what we talked about before? No one, nothing gathers a crowd like what bad news. Your demise brings your haters around. Your demise, the, the gang, all the gangs, they know all about that stuff. The dumbest people in the world, are, when it comes to black people, they're anthropologists. <laughs> they know all of that stuff. <laughs> they had a D in math, uh, Brother Kevin, but they got an A plus in black statistics. Well, actually, just, just and they sound smart. Well, where did you go to school? Well, no, I went to Fox News Institute of Technology. <laughs> Donald Trump State. <laughs> I know everything bad about you. Guess what? You know what? That's what your enemy, your enemy knows everything, all your weaknesses. They can quote them and act like they're scholars. Man, dude, that dude took calculus three. No, I didn't even pass basic math, but I know 13%, 98%. The abortion rate is so and so, so and so, so and so, and only, and only, they act smart. What do you work? Well, I deliver pup wood at so and so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you in the military? No, I couldn't pass the ads, but I'm smart. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was with that. And I remember being among them, one of the, one of the largest churches, one in Gainesville, and one of the largest evangelical churches in America. And I remember that preacher would worship and blow the saxophone and get off that thing and talk about black people complaining about slavery. He would say, How can he be that dumb? I, he didn't go to school. But his influence, and he hung around smart black people that sold out, so he assumed, he, that, they allowed him to be as stupid as he wanted to be. Yes. 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 But he would go to Washington, D.C. and use his influence to keep things as the status quo and then blame God for it. Mm. You have accusers even in your own house. Right. 
I've been around him. I've been in a room with him. I've been in rooms with, with one of the largest black preachers in America and him say, hey, guess what? The way you hide something from black people is put it in a book. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, sir, don't you realize that more? You never went your dumb head. <laughs> You're talking about my sons now get nasty. But Morehouse is down the street. You, you definitely wouldn't have qualified to go. They would have rejected you. But some of those brilliant black men in America are educated right down. Oh, I didn't think about that. I know. Because you don't think. They tell you what to say. Yes, that's true. You get what you, you get. You, you got to call Eagle Mountain before you say something. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's right. So God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God will allow the personal things in your life. To, if you are serving God, God will allow things in your life to get bad and allow the Lazarus in your life to die so that it causes a crowd. So when he heals you, that he can declare, I am the resurrection. He allowed, him, he allowed me to lose everything. He allowed my enemies, the people who I fed, had taken them to another level, had taken them to a life that their bloodline had never seen before, lived in a house, experienced and that they had the nerve to, act, to treat me like their enemies enemy, but God was right there. If you read the story of Lazarus, the Pharisees and everybody were right there looking like, mm, mm, mm. Right. Right. Even Mary and Martha like, man, uh, 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 Jesus let him die. Mm -hmm. God prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. So guess what now? Poor people, brown people, whoever else, God will allow them to say whatever. So when he turns it around, guess what's going to happen now? Prophetically, God's going to prepare the table and your enemies will be locked out watching you eat. Watching you win elections. Watching you get Grammys. Watching you start law schools. Watching you graduate. Watching you bring that 13% up. Watching you bring the 98% down and can't do nothing about it. How can you tell us your enemies? Because when things good happen to you, people don't clap. Right. And guess what? You'll never know who your enemies were unless you went through that battle of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. And when God brings you out of that, God is never going to bring you out of something like that until he, and, and without a plan to recover you. When will God do it? When God allows, when your enemy's heart gets so hard, when your enemy knows your business, when your enemy surrounds you, when your enemy is at his greatest height to attack you, God will come in. The Bible says this, when the God, he, God says that when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift a standard. When you're in your most danger, when it's the most critical part, God in your personal life now will lift that. That's enough. Mm -hmm. When you're at your breaking point. When you're about to lose your mind. When you want to throw up the towel. When you want to throw in the towel. When you want to walk away from being a parent. When you want to quit school. When you want to take your life. When you want to walk out from that job. When you want to cuss people out now. God will come and say, okay, that's enough. <laughs> I can tell you now, and I can contest you this right now. I am in a table, right? Bonnie and I are in a table. First lady and I, are, Bonnie and I are in a, in a table. First lady and I are in a table. I'm going to get it right. <laughs> and don't you think we haven't had people come against us? They'll never come back. He'll never recover. Yeah. If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have had nothing. Mm -hmm. And God listened to this, and God said, I thought it was me. No, but they're going to say it was them that did it. Okay. <laughs> God is like, hmm. Hmm. I thought I was an Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. I remember worried about my enemy, and the God said, well, let me, let me see who they are so I can shake and, and quiver too. Let me see who they are so I can be in fear too. Right. Bring them out so I can. He was being sarcastic towards me in the parking lot. Say, you seem to be so terrified of what's going to happen to you. Let me see who this great person is. Let me see how terrifying they are so that I may shake too because I thought I was God. God prepares a table, baby. He prepares a table. That's right. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, why are you quiet when I'm suffering? He's preparing a table. God, why are you let my kiss? He's preparing a table. God, you know I need this. He's preparing a table. I've been the black sheep all my life. He's preparing a table. I'm sick. God is preparing to take. God, where are you? God is in the back preparing the collards. He's preparing the cornbread. He's he putting meat in it. Uh, it's for the, uh, it's a potato pie. Huh? Hey, come on now. 
the potato salad, and you better not put raisins in it. <laughs> not at a black table. You better not think, oh, you want to get a black man to fight, put raisins in and grapes and potato salad. Huh? <laughs> like, who, who made this? Well, we're just going to put this on the side. Karen made this, you know. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> We ain't gonna eat that. <laughs> well, no one touched my potato salad or my broccoli salad. Well, I don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, pin toes, everything you want, little neck bones, you know. For the vegan people, they go, they got, they got the candy yams up there, huh, with the cinnamon on it, huh? Huh? Come on now. What? Some macaroni and cheese, blackaroni and cheese and stuff you put in the oven? Yeah. Amen. God's got that for you because he knows about your suffering. He knows your hard time. He knows what's been happening is wrong. And your enemy think that they're God. And because they had minimal success, they think it's going to always be that way. But God is, God, the, enemy, the devil thought he was setting you up. But guess what? He's being set up now because that table is there. And guess what? He think he's going to sit eating God and say, no, 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 this ain't for you. God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. When? Guess what? A lot of time the win is God. The suffering in your life is not about you. God is trying to vindicate himself. God is trying to get some glory himself. God is trying to get honor himself. So guess what? Sometimes he'll raise up an enemy so he can bring them down. You better get that. So that they know and your enemies know there's a God in the world and there's a God in your life. Take away one here. So guess what we're going to do and take away one now. So when God is getting ready to give you justice, this is the first thing you need to do now. Love your enemies. You don't have to get them back because God says, guess what now? Vengeance is mine, not revenge. Jesus says this, he says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the what? Children of your father, which is in heaven. The world now is I for an I two for two. I'm mad because I didn't do I'm there. I'm hateful because I fight. That's how you did. The devil's kids get revenge. We don't do that. But guess what now? Guess what? God says it for God or he makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain to the just and the unjust. Guess what? You know why you don't love your enemies? Because you think that what they did to you stopped you, but it can't. God's going to prepare a table. I'm trying to encourage you today that God's going to prepare a table for you. And it's going to have the wealth there. It's going to have the family there that you want. It's going to have vindication there. But guess what now? You, he can't prepare the table when you run in your mouth. You're trying to prepare your own table. You're trying to dish out revenge, dish out this to comment. You got all these side dishes over here, and the main dish is a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> so you got your own table. Guess, come on now. I got to roll. You got your own table over here, and it's got a bunch of other mess on it now. Huh? Yes. <laughs> huh? You got backbiting on the table. Uh, you got lie. I'm gonna get them. You gonna lie on the table? Hey, guess what? You gonna you gonna use some other people to get? Huh? You got your, some of you got lawsuits on there. You got all kind of stuff on the table. Yes. Some of you got a gun on the table. I'm gonna stab somebody. I'm gonna do this. Uh, hey, some of you got an eye roll on the table. Amen. And so God can't give you justice because you too busy. He can't set the table because your table's in the way. Yes. Take away two. Vengeance is God's business. If you want justice in your life, you got to stop trying to get people back. Get out of God's way. Romans chapter 12, verse 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather <clears throat> give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Get next to your name and say, get out the way. And God, come on, of course, the way that God gets your enemies back is he prepares a table. The way that God gets your haters, look, guess what? I'm learning something now in this season that guess what? Your haters hate you being blessed. That killed them more. They'd rather get punched in the stomach. 
You know? <laughs> then to see you driving a new car, got a new, uh, a, 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 a new life. You got love in your life. You got a new job. Lost the weight. You healed. You can vote. The, you, the second president come. You know, uh, uh, two or three Obamas come now. You know. Amen. That's what kills your enemies more than anything else. If you look even the life of Cinderella, guess what now? That's what what that, them wicked substances that when they when she put that slipper on, man, they when they lost their mind. That's why God wants your enemies to watch, because that's their punishment, because their heart is wrong, because the Bible says that you should rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. And guess what? Now, because their heart is wrong, their torment is seeing your success. That's right. Mm. That's right. Mm. You don't know who your enemies is? Put, a, put your new house up and see who, who act up. <laughs> put your new shoes up. Show yourself on vacation and see who hearts it and see who don't say nothing. This is Dr. Lucas. Now, this ain't Jesus, but G G guess what? God said, Pray, bless your, uh, your enemies. Guess what? You got to know who they are. Mm -hmm. And you're too busy trying to say, no, Tom is my friend. He ain't my No, no, no. He said, love your enemy now, but he didn't say don't act like it ain't, it ain't what it is. Right. <laughs> huh? Because my Bible says watch and pray. <laughs> Amen. You better know. Take away three. God is going to restore you. And this is Joel. Just Joel chapter 25, and Israel has gone through a, a long battle here. I, I need you to turn there. It's in Joel or Joel chapter, chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Guess what? This is prophetically God is plans on restoring you. I told you about what two or three weeks ago God had given me these birth certificates. He showed me these vision, these birth certificates that are raining down from heaven. On those birth certificates were raining down for heaven, and they had gold writing on them. They had angelic instructions on them. Saying those who have given their life to Christ and new Christians, God has angelic instructions to bless them. Amen. He wants to bless them. So he's going to turn the last to the first. This is not the season to be missing church. Not giving, cursing, prophetic, anointing, not, not being under prophetic teaching, uh, uh, showing up and, 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 and missing services or obeying when you want to and all the other stuff. This is the time to get plugged into God because you don't want to miss what God is doing. I will restore the years that the locusts and the canker worm, that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, the palmerom, my great army which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that he has dealt wonderfully with you and my people, and, shall never, and my people shall never be ashamed. Why is this relevant for now rather than the Old Testament? Because the rule is if God has done it once, he'll do it again. It triggers it. Divine alignment in your when Will God do this in your life? When you get lined up with what God calls you to do. When you love your enemies. When you begin to stop being revenge. When you begin. When you, hallelujah. God is. The time is set. He's just waiting for you to get in rest. He's waiting for you to rest and hand it to him. Your enemies have no power over you. None whatsoever. Because they're not stronger than God. I don't care how much they pray. I don't care how much help they get. I don't care how much all that other stuff. Guess what? They got to go to God. And God ain't stupid. God ain't, I already know what you do. I already know. I see your heart. I know why you want this guy to curse. I, want you, I know why you want this girl this way right here. No. We're almost there. Take away four. God is going to restore you in public. When we talk about before, God prepared, thou prepare us a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I anoint my head with oil, and thou, and thou, and, and my cup runs over. Guess what? Now he's going to do this in the presence of people. Why is he going to do it? So that his name is known. The best way to make your haters a liar is for God to bless you in front of everyone. 
Because guess what? Yeah, the, the, the accuser and the people that you're hating the accuser, they're looking like, man, no, that can't be true because how, how are they blessed? God is not going to bless men. How in the world are they blessed? And so your haters got to explain all of that stuff. Yeah. So it's got to be another lie on top of another lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Yeah. And the more they do it, the more God's going to show out. Amen? Right. God prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Amen? This is the last one here, and we're going to stop here. Man, we were on time. Amen? Hmm? Answered prayer is a sign that the trial is coming to an end. Answered prayer, this is takeaway five. Answered prayer is a sign that the trial is coming to an end. Why? Some of you are not getting answered prayer, not because God doesn't hear you, but God is waiting. God's timing. He's quiet. He doesn't want to tell you what's going on. He's preparing that table. He's preparing it. Especially if you're faithful to God, you're loving God, you're doing what no one in your family's done, you're attending church, you're giving, you're serving God. And guess what now? You're in alignment with God. The Bible says that the faithful shall abound in blessings. You're not blessed by mistake. So guess what? When you begin to start begin to pray again and, and, and when you were in your season of trial and those prayers seem like they weren't answered and all of a sudden now things break and, th and your prayer life is back and answer prayer starts showing up again, that is a sign that the trial is over with. What is, why am I telling you that now? Because some of you during your trial have lost faith in God, lost faith in prayer. I remember what, just a few minutes ago we had a brother in the church, he, he, uh, had a, he has a headache, a headache and guess what now? Because I had been through a trial, my wife says, hey, uh, 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 pastor, go get the oil and let's pray for him. I was like, uh, I just prayed for him up here. And God said, no, have faith in me. Go and put, you know, you know, go at least go put oil in and pray for him. Amen. And sometimes when you're going through a trial and those prayers you feel like weren't answered, it's tough now to go back and then try to pick that up again and try to do what worked before. But I encourage you now to go back and when that trial's over with now, go and believe God more. Go believe God for the debt freedom again. Go believe God for healing. Go and witness to people again. Yeah. Amen. Answered prayer is another sign that the trial is over. God is preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies for his glory. And so God will raise up some of the nastiest, most conniving, lying enemies that you can have. Why? So that it draws a crowd. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Get good news. Good news. God has better plans for you. God's got good things for you. The devil can't stop it. If you just buckle up and like Prophet Harris would say, get your popcorn ready. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Is that good? It, 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 it wasn't it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And God is going to, this is a prophetic message. I believe God is going to go back and begin to back it. And God said, start looking for real estate. Mm -hmm. Start looking for real estate, Lord says. I hear him just say specifically, start looking for real estate. Mm -hmm. For those who want to own homes. Mm -hmm. so open your mind. Open, open. Start, be, now thank you, Lord. This is the season now that you can, should be open for certain things. God wants to demonstrate. Thank you. Ah, hallelujah. God said, I want to demonstrate my goodness. Mm -hmm. Be prepared. Go, get the, go look for a home. Go and, go and get a mortgage company if, if God tells you to go do that. for. Go, go hey, look, look, brush your teeth. Go look for a wife. Go look for a Boaz. Go get, look for a roof there. You know? Get your credit right. Get your, get your Mac game right. You know? Yeah. What you going to say? What's the pickup line you going to What you going to do? Huh? Hmm? Kevin said don't lead with money. So don't lead with money now. Don't, 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 don't go dungeon. Don't go flashing all that stuff now. You know? Yeah? <laughs> Just do that D smooth thing you do. Go ahead. Huh? I'm the prize. That's, what, that's right. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Kevin said don't never lead with money. Don't. Kevin said uh-uh. Amen. Amen. So guess what? This is the time to and I'll leave you with this. Isaiah 54 says, he says, he says, enlarge your, your stakes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you new territory, God says. Look for new territories. Enlarge your, ter enlarge your territory. Enlarge your stakes. He says, what does that mean? Up your expectations. Mm -hmm. God wants to show out mighty in your life like he's done in, in me and First Lady's life and continues to do it. Amen. We're looking for a new facility. We're looking to move in in December. Amen. So we're excited about that. We believe in God. Chuck, she said, are you going to get tired of running your mouth on this? She's like, she's so cute. She's like, 
I got you, baby. I got, I got, I got you, Tweety Bird. All right, we're going to pray. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, guess what? It's not time to be playing with God now. God's got good things for you. And guess what? Tomorrow's not promised to anyone. Jesus could say, hey, look, I'm just going to wrap this up and we're going to bring all the believers home now. And guess what? He'll still have fulfilled every promise he made because mm -hmm. heaven is perfect. He's got all that. Heaven is justice. That's right. Amen. Yeah. So guess what? The, the Bible says, well, there's an old song that says, won't you serve God while you have a chance? Mm -hmm. So guess what? Give your life to Christ today. Go ahead and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus and as a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. And fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, if you prayed that prayer and it was sincere, guess what? Guess what? You are born again. God honors that prayer. God hears. The Bible said God hears the prayers of a sinner. He hears the prayers of repentance. Amen? Yes. He hears that prayer. So guess what I want you to do? I want you to continue to watch the broadcast on, 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 on Sunday at 11 a.m. And, 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 and on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Or come to the campus at 107 um, um, Technology Parkway in Peachtree Corners, Georgia, 30092. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So we'll go ahead and, and I'm going to pray for the rest of the congregation. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the new souls, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the table that you have set in the presence of their enemies, Lord God. We thank you that they're going to have wisdom, Lord God. Father God, that they're, gonna, they're, they're not going to invite anyone. Hold on, i got to say one thing. When God brings this table to you, it's God's table, not yours. Amen. So guess what now? What does that mean? There's nothing more rude than when somebody invites you to dinner and you invite two guests to it. Unannounced. Like, I invited you, Leon. I ain't invite them. What does that mean? When God bless you, stop trying to buy love and bail people out. You don't hate your enemies, but you don't got to, you don't got to bring them to the table and sit down and go, no, some, they need to watch sometimes to purify them. Let that settle. You're going to have to learn how to let them watch. And stop trying to explain the blessing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Hey, this is Dr. Charles C. Lucas, Senior Pastor of Promise and Ministry, saying, come on, Nikhil, keep moving.